my name is Melissa Strange and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Drag. Today we're going to be talking about RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9, episode number 3, also known as Dragly Ever After. Like, happily ever after, because this was a princess-themed episode. So I'm wearing my princess pound cake shirt, because pound cake is a princess, and... This pink shirt, and this is probably like the most girly, pinkish, princessish item of clothing I actually own. So we're wearing it. So before I get into my Rook Happen review, I have a crazy announcement to make. We, me, Jimmy Pink, Jamar84, and Matthew Ransom Raves, we are all going to be judges on a drag show on YouTube, and you could be on the show if you go to my link here in the description, the first link in the description, it says Lip Sync Jungle, that's the name of the show, and it says, like, audition something, there's a link there, click on it, watch it, even if you're not gonna audition, watch it, because, you know, then you might know a little bit about what we're gonna be doing for the show that you can, you're gonna be able to see, it's gonna, it's gonna happen, we're doing this awesome, I'm so excited about project. And uh, if you do drag or you want to start doing drag to do this competition, click that link, find out more, submit your application. So please, 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 please check out that link, share it with your friends, share it to anybody you think might be interested in doing the competition because there's going to be a prize, there's going to be a prize or two prizes or three prizes. There's going to be prizes because who the heck wants to do a competition without a prize? Just give me a prize. It's going to be a fun time. You're going to get experience. You're going to get exposure. It's going to be a great damn time. So please make sure you check out the link in my description. Like I said, now let's get into my recap and review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9, Episode Number 3, Dragly Ever After. This episode of Drag Race starts off with the After James elimination, where Kamara is extremely confused as to why she is in the bottom. Really, girl? You were in the bottom because that look was crap and your performance was not memorable and that's why you were in the bottom. Duh! And then Trinity is feeling all types of ways about Valentina and her wedding look. She is ready to kill Valentina and steal and rip and snatch all of her wigs or something just to win. She, Trinity is, is out for blood. Trinity is like, the next one is mine. I can't believe it. I mean, Valentina did great, but I can't believe it. The next one is mine. So I'm just like, all right, Trinity, bring it, girl. And it's a new day in the workroom and the queens are greeted by the Cheetalicious RuPaul, as always, just so wonderful, so charming, so brilliant. And then Ru's extremely creepy wax figure thing. Those things creep me out. That was ridiculous. I mean, it's beautiful. Rue has a a, 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 a a wax figure of of Rue. That's awesome to be famous enough to have a wax figure of yourself. But it was terrifying. I find them all creepy. They just are way too realistic. So Rue announces this jam-packed competition of the week where the queens are going to have to come up with a princess look, a backstory, a sidekicker, friend of the princess that they will also play, and uh, uh, an entire look that they have to make from scratch, right? So it's a lot. It is a hell of a lot of stuff to do. And I'm like, let's see what these queens are gonna bring. So right off the bat, you have Aja who can sew and is like really confident that she's going to kill this competition. Then you have Pheromone who can't sew and is really not quite sure what she's going to do. Then you have like Miss Kamara Kardashian over there trying to pay the other queens to make her outfit for her. Then you have Miss Eureka being like, I'm gonna be a sore rat. And I'm like, the actual idea of this like grungy underground princess, I'm all, I'm all for it. That sounds fabulous but it's either gonna be done really well or it's gonna be just missed. Like either the, it's gonna miss the mark or it's gonna do amazing. So I'm like really, really, really looking forward to seeing what Eureka's gonna do. I mean, some queens like glitter and brooches, Eureka's all for critters and roaches. And then for a little bit there, we had Cynthia giving uh, Kimora English lessons. So Brew comes into the workroom again to do a walkthrough to check on all the queens and what they've got going on, what they think that they're gonna do. And you know, she wants to see who's sweating, see who's being confident. She, you know, she, she gives her input. She has to help these queens before this competition. 
Now, poor little Farah. She can't sew a dress. She could hardly sew a sentence together while talking to Rue. So I'm like, I'm like, she's gonna end up in the bottom. You can already tell. Just hopefully she can turn it out. Then you have Aja, and I'm like, I don't, I like Aja's concept, but I, from like what she was saying, I was thinking like, she's acting really confident. Like, yeah, I've got this, but also, do you got this girl? It was like, I don't know if that was the way they were editing it, but they were at like, it was appearing like, sometimes in, the, in, in Drag Race, you've seen it where the queens are like super confident and then they end up being on the bottom. And I was totally getting that vibe the way that it was being filmed. Even Rue was like, oh, I've heard that before. It's almost like when you hear Rue say that, you know that it's gonna happen, right? So oh, I'm like worried for Aja, worried for Farah, worried for Kimora, but I don't care. I just like, I don't think she's gonna do good. Um, and then you have Trinity, who again, like Aja is being really confident about having him, but I think that Trinity's vision is a little bit more clear than Aja's is. But if Trinity has is talking all this big game, she gotta turn it out, right? That's that's the bottom line. You're gonna talk so much game, you gotta turn it out. So I'm like, girl, give me your starfish, Patrick Star. What's his name? Patrick the Starfish? Oh, and Eureka helps Sparrow a bit with her outfit, which never usually ends up being a good thing. On Elimination Day, we learn a little bit of the history of the cuckoo of Cynthia, and I'm still just as confused as I ever was before, so that was a great few minutes of time in, in the Drag Race episode. There was also shade thrown at Aja about face tuning her Instagram photos in real life and blah, blah, blah. But I think it was a little meaner than they should have maybe done. I don't know, I felt like it was kind of real shade, really shady, and not in like a nice shady way. It was like a, ooh, that's cold. And then came the emotional part of the episode with the queens, especially uh, Trinity, who's from Orlando, discuss Pulse. Trinity, being a pageant queen, is actually a former Miss Pulse and was discussing how a week earlier, she was performing on that exact stage at that club and uh, she didn't personally know anybody who died, but she knew one girl through someone she works with, uh, her daughter. Her daughter was killed, murdered at Pulse, and so that's just awful, awful, so sad. And then Cynthia drops a huge bomb saying that she was supposed to perform that night and had to reschedule and Kenya Michaels was like, no problem. So like Kenya Michaels was in the club, which I already knew. Um, but Cynthia was supposed to be there, which I'm pretty sure I read online last year, but like I read so much stuff on the internet when the whole Pulse thing was going on. Literally when I think about it, my mind, I'm sure you can tell on my face, my mind just goes like goosebumps, fuzziness, like I just can't formulate thoughts still and it's been like, it's coming up on a year I guess soon, but it's just insane. And so the queens talk about, oh man, like I get goosebumps thinking about Pulse and like that whole situation. I don't like, oh, it just bothers me so much. I mean, it should bother anybody, but I just can't deal with it. Uh, so let's just, uh, keep moving on. I don't know that I want to talk about this much more. We really gotta, you know, stick together as LGBT people and uh, not be scared to go to clubs, to go out and be scared of these things, like, because this happened and we all just gotta stay together and stick up for each other, stand up and fight for what's right, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's keep moving on. So on the main stage, we have the queen herself, Mama Rue. Her evil villain queen, evil queen, Michelle Visage. You have Prince Todrick. You have uh, Jester Cressley. Like, what is was he supposed to be like the, the jester? I wasn't really sure what he was going for. And then you had Prince Charming, which was Cheyenne Jackson. And they're all the judges on this week's episode. First up is Princess Cucutina, which is Cynthia. And it was pink. And it was... Very Cynthia, I'm surprised her her princess like friend thing wasn't literally just a butthole, like my cuckoo, I'm called it cuckoo. I don't even know what it was called. I was just like, what? I don't get it. Next. Then you have Princess Carcinogeta, something like that. Rue could not pronounce it, so I was like, I don't need to learn how to say it properly. Peppermint. Peppermint was serving a hot look, pun intended. She was flaming. And yeah, it was just great. She had her little buddy was a pilot light, flaming, 
thing. Oh, it was, it was good. She, she did really good. Pheromone, Pherosai. It was the yellow blowfish thing. At first I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool. What? Oh, you painted your eyelids white and you're keeping them closed and talking and, but they're kind of opening, like just weird half asleep kind of look. Uh, and I really didn't understand what was going on. And then I'm like, and girl, it looks like you're just wearing a bra and a piece of material safety pin to your waist. And I understand you can't sew or glue even, or I don't know, I was kind of like, girl, you better step your pussy up. That was just something, but nothing. Then you had Princess Climaxica. Climactica? Princess Climactica. Climaxica. I don't know. Charlie has. It was cute. It was good. Uh, not a super standout one though, but it was safe. Like, it was alright. Then you had Princess Eureka of Daria. Uh, I'm guessing that's supposed to be Eureka of Diarrhea. And that's Eureka. And I, I kind of like the name. I kind of like the look. Not one of my favorites. I think she could have done a little bit more to make a real, like, girl just came out of a slimy ass sewer. She was a queen of the sludge. But it was like, it was all right. I mean, I'm pretty sure she had a cockroach, like, glued to her face. So she gets points just for that. And then that dog thing was real creepy that she had, that little uh, sidekick dog. Was it a dog? I don't know, it was creepy. And then you had Princess, hashtag Subway Fish, which is Alexis Michelle. Princess Crab Legs, maybe. Princess Snow Crab. Princess King Crab. Uh, no, maybe not King Crab. Queen Crab. Princess Queen Crab? I don't know. Uh, not one of my favorites. Uh, it was definitely just a glamorous look again with uh, shells and, uh, and crabs glued, glued, glued to it. It was good, but like not amazing. And then what was it, a tadpole? It was supposed to look like sperm, right? Like, is that what that was supposed to be? Then you have Princess Banana Lady and her funky chunky monkey or something. Kimura, Kimura, Kimura. Also couldn't sew, uh, I don't know what she did, glued chunks of fur to a bikini top and a bottom or something. And poor Kimura couldn't wear her hip pads for that look. And she just, so it's just so sad. She couldn't wear those hip pads, but she's serving up a banana lady look and banana ladies don't wear hip pads. And this outfit just doesn't work with hip pads. And uh, it was garbage. I mean, she could have had, she could have done something with like a princess, like Amazon princess, Glamazon princess, I don't know. She, like, there was, like if there was a little bit of tweaking there, she actually could have done good. Banana lady, just bye 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 Peel you, open you, there was no layers, it was just garbage, bye. I hate bananas. And then we had Princess Zathina, I believe that's what it was, which is Nina Bonina Brown, serving up straight out of the mothership realness, alien princess. Hello, what is it, this? Oh my gosh, yes, we are not worthy. Even that little uh, the sidekick thing, so good, love it. Lo oh, it was, I, I love, really like Nina's. I feel like she had a whole concept and it really worked. Great job. Princess Uglina, Sasha Velour. That, first of all, her look alone was awesome, but I'm just gonna even skip over her because I think she was outshined a little bit by that damn sidekick crazy sidekick, whatever that thing was, I was like, oh my gosh. First of all, I forgot it was even her. Thought somebody else was playing it. That's great acting. Didn't even realize it was you for a second. Honestly, I thought it was like, who is that? What is it? So good. Probably my, not probably, it is my favorite of the night just for that sidekick buddy thing alone. That amazing Sasha's. I can't believe she didn't end up making top three. I thought for sure. I was like, oh, she made top three for sure. Nope, she was safe, but I was stunned that she didn't make top three. Then you had Shea Coule, who was Princess Aquarina, Aquina, Aquarina, I don't know. And a Uranus fairy or something. Hers honestly kind of confused me. Princess Vera, also known as Valentina, was okay. I didn't like it nearly as much as the judges did. Actually, I was really stunned that she was in the top three. I figured she'd be safe. I didn't think that that uh, performance she did would send her home. Her buddy, her uh, whatever they're called, sidekick friend thing, 
uh, it was like funny, but I, I don't know that it was top three like material. I, I think I was maybe missing something or was confused or something, but it really wasn't one of my favorites. I would not have put that top three. I would have definitely swapped her for, for Sasha Velour, I think. Definitely, actually, I would have switched Valentina and Sasha Velour in the top three, but I'm not RuPaul. RuPaul's the queen. She knows what's up. Princess Disaster. Asha. Knew it was coming. Knew she was gonna bomb. Like I said, just the way that they were clipping her parts together and uh, like what Rue said, oh, I've heard that before, or pe queens have told me that before. It really gave off a vibe right away. Like she thinks she can do really good, but she can do bad. Now, the actual outfit, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I got Banji right away. I was like, oh, I know what she's going for. Uh, so I was kind of also confused when the judges said that they didn't get that from her at all because right away I read that instantly. It was like, she's going for like a Banji like thing. I did not get the lava though. I did not get the lava storyline, but I got the Banji storyline more than the lava storyline. Her buddy, sidekick, whatever, was like, bleh. I was hoping she was gonna do really well and she didn't do really well. So I was like, I should know. I should know. Don't do it. Don't do it. And lastly, we have Princess Aqua Pussy who slayed everyone. Hers was the best, hands down. You knew she was gonna win, uh, oh, for sure. There was no. There was no doubt that she was gonna win. Hers was really, really, really well done compared to everybody else's. Trinity's was just super duper duper cohesive and well done and awesome. But overall, I just found like a lot of their sidekicks were really robotic and boring. And I felt like there was way too many underwater princesses. And a lot of them really just, it felt like they didn't cohesively really create a story line. It was more like, they spent a lot of time thinking about what they were gonna put on, but then the sidekick with it, just there's a lot of uh, missed opportunities in majority of their performances. And so the top three queens were Peppermint, Trinity, and Valentina. Like I said, I would have replaced Sasha Velour with Valentina, but that's fine. Trinity won. We knew that was gonna happen. And the bottom three were Kimora, Pheromone, and Aja. And like, Really, that was a toss-up between Farah and Aja being who was going to go up against Kimora. Aja's versus Farah's, yeah, you know what, Aja's was a little bit worse than Farah's, but Farah's was also really basic. At least I felt like Aja put a lot more thought, there was more story, kind of, even maybe it took till she explained it for them to understand. But still, it made more sense-ish in a way, or was more creative than Farah. so I thought maybe Farah would be in the bottom, but she wasn't. It was Aja versus Kimora, and I was like, if Kimora stays over Aja, it can't. It can't happen. I have seen tons of Aja's footage online of her lip-syncing, killing songs. We saw Kimora perform last week on her lip-sync to Love Shack. Was horrible and she got to stay two weeks in a row in the bottom she had to go home come on i mean I, we've definitely seen queens be in the bottom more than twice like coco was like a total bottom queen for all of season five i feel like didn't she lip sync like every freaking week or something i don't know she lip sync a lot in season five but what i'm saying is like kamara had got to go i predicted that literally in the last episode of my my review i said kamara was going home next week now, they did their lip sync. I watched the entire thing basically like this. Like at the edge of my seat, dying, freaking out. If I was wearing a wig, it would have been on the floor. My teeth also, if they were dentures, would have been on the floor because my jaw was just hanging open. I was tearing my hair out. I was like, if Aja goes home, it's just not her time. It can't happen. We cannot will it into the universe. Aja has to stay. And that's all I was thinking. Praying to, who is it? Guadalupe, Vir Virgin Guadalupe. Who does Vir uh, Valentina pray to? I was praying to her. Hoping, keep Aja in the competition, you know? And uh, and it worked because Aja stayed, Kimora left, and I was like, yes, but Aja needs to step it up if she's gonna stay. And like, she's gonna have to literally shock the judges in the next episode and really prove to them that things have changed because even, I think it was Michelle, called her out on her makeup for a few weeks uh, it was like, it's been dark the past few, few runways. 
So she's really gonna have to change that. Um, also Farah, Farah's gonna have to step it up. Farah's gonna have to really knock them out of the park next week, I think as well, because they found her to be really boring. Uh, so I think that Aja and Farah, the two of them have to step it up the most next week. I also feel like there's a few queens that are kind of like floating through, if that makes sense, and like not like super impressing me or really anybody. I feel like like there's been a there's a handful of them. Like we we all kind of thought like wow they're gonna do awesome and they're kind of just like flatlining or giving you the same kind of looks every week. And I'll tell you who I'm talking about. I'm talking about like Shea Coule. I'm talking about Eureka. I'm talking about who's the one that I, there's literally one that I almost always forget. For example, though, like Valentina, she has shocked most of us and she's turning the looks, turning them out. But then there's some of them like, yeah, like Shea Coulee, Eureka, um, like Alexis Michelle is just doing this, the glamour looks every week. Like I get she's beautiful, but like switch it up, give us something cool. Uh, or exactly that is not cool, but give us something different. There's just quite a few of them that I feel like are just, they're just kind of like, sliding by, they're getting a lot of safes, they're just not really doing anything to like really wow us, right? Where you have people like freaking Nina turning herself into aliens and you have Sasha Velour just doing like crazy artsy stuff that is so left field nobody's ever seen. Um, just there's there's certain queens that are definitely turning the looks and there's certain ones that are just like they're really just sliding by. So those queens that have been sliding by a little bit, they really also need to do something to totally wow us. Actually, well, Shea Coulee, she's the one who did the hot dog costume. That was really cool. But I just mean, there's been quite a few little bits and pieces here where Shea's kind of just been like, meh, to me. And I thought she was gonna do really well. Like, I'm not saying that she's not gonna do really well. I just mean, yeah, she's kind of like floating by at the moment. I'm ready to see these queens kick it into high gear. They're at RuPaul's Drag Race. Serve it, bring it. The energy level of Pheromone was like here. She spent her entire two days, one day, whatever, how long it was, literally complaining that her energy was down here and it needed to be up here, you know? Like, come on, where was it? I don't know. Why am I doing this for my arms? I don't know. Let me know who your favorite princess look was. I told you I'm giving mine to Sasha, even just based on her kick, uh, kick, kick. What's a kick? on her sidekick. Uh, that's my opinion. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And also, please check out the Lip Sync Jungle link. Please, 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 please. And audition if you want to do drag or you are a drag queen, because that would just be so rad of you. My battery is dying. That's why I started talking a lot quicker. So please subscribe, post one of these after every episode of Drag Race, and there's going to be more content coming up on my channel soon. I'm so close to hitting a thousand subscribers. It would just be really nice if you could subscribe to me, please. Once again, my name is Melissa Strange, and until next time, stay strange.